Hi everyone, I'm Ben, a developer advocate here at Stripe, and today I'm excited to introduce you to Raj, who is a solutions architect at Stripe. We're going to be talking about what the role of a solutions architect is and how they can help customers. Hi Raj, how are you doing? Hi, not too bad. How are you doing, Ben? So, Raj, tell me, what is a solutions architect and how does that pertain specifically to Stripe? Yeah, sure. So a solutions architect, in my view, what I, I've been doing is I actually help customers navigate the Stripe products and services and ecosystem. Um, usually when customers start off with Stripe, they very much go to our website and they can self-serve. But what we usually find is that they need an actual human to talk to, to actually go beyond just looking at documentation and understand how to integrate with Stripe, how to actually take payments, but it's not just payments, it's a whole bunch of other stuff around financial infrastructure. And sometimes they don't get that from the documentation. So they just need somebody like myself to actually navigate that ecosystem, but also point them towards areas that can help improve their integration, like things they haven't thought of in the future or things that they just think, oh, we didn't know Stripe did that. We didn't know Stripe did that. And actually, go beyond of what Stripe does in terms of, especially in my role working with enterprises, it's beyond of just taking payments, but see how they integrate with say accounting systems and how Stripe integrates with their whole workflow, for example. And that's not something you can get out of the documentation straight away. Right. So you mentioned lots of different systems and a few different products there. As a solutions architect, do you have to have knowledge of all of these products or do you have solutions architects that kind of specialize in a particular area? I see it very much as a T-shaped kind of role. So we have a broad understanding at a certain level of certain things, which kind of helps the customer to say home into certain areas. But then, you know, we can't do everything. So mm -hmm. then we call upon specialist solutions architects that we have. So I get to a level where I think, actually, hold on, I think a specialist solutions architect will help you help you deep dive into this area. So we have specialists in say payments optimization. We have specialists who are involved with billing financing, which is part of revenue finance and automation. We have specialists who do with fraud advisory and, and aspects of to do with payments fraud, payments optimization. So I have a whole bunch of people I can call upon that can actually bring a complete solution to the customer. So you're like that initial technical entry point for, right. for customers. Yeah. And, and particularly, I myself may have a particular specialism that I can actually take that conversation and go ahead with it. So I, I've been doing a lot of stuff around connect recently. So I feel like I've got, I've got some background around our connect uh, solution. What, what is connect? So, sorry. Yeah. So connect is basically our way of actually moving funds within the ecosystem of, of Stripe. So you could have say a platform set up. So. A customer may have a particular set of business requirements where he want may, he or she may want to actually send payments to another merchant. So for a B2B example, mm -hmm. use case, how do you facilitate that with Stripe? So Connect actually gives you that facility of actually onboarding merchants onto the platform. And then once you've onboarded those merchants, you can actually facilitate funds flows to the end merchant via the platform. So it's a kind of a, I kind of see it as kind of a plumbing aspect of money movement. Right, uh, that's involved. So can you give me some examples of where perhaps yourself or other SAs have actually helped customers with some integration challenges with Stripe? Yeah, sure. So um, I talk about one customer that I've been working quite closely with, which is a donation platform. Mm -hmm. uh, they've historically been using other payments providers to do um, batch settlement of donations to merchants. But they came to us and said, well, we want to use Stripe in terms of using real time real-time settlements and they wanted to know how we would do that on Stripe. You know, they came to us and said, well, can you facilitate that? And not be for them, but also the merchants that they have. So I would help them with like, you know, they started off with a particular solution. And then what we, I did as a solutions architect is actually help them actually make that int integration come to life with say, for example, demos or doing a funds flow diagram or running some kind of POC. Uh, example to actually visualize how that setup would work on Stripe, but also how the funds would flow. Because I think with the sense of doing a demo and something, doing something visual is a lot more impact from a lot more powerful. And then kind of like the penny drops, excuse the pun because it was pennies, but the penny does drop with a customer when they pennies see. Pennies was the name of the customer as pennies well. Pennies was right? the name of the customer yeah. as well. So it does actually, like that visualization really does help them to understand this is how money flows between entities and accounts and merchants and platforms. 
So are you, in a sense, working together with the developers of, for example, pennies on, on a particular POC to help them understand how to solve something? Yeah, it does vary. So some of our customers don't have any development resource, for example. So they may be just as a, a small entity. They don't have direct development resources. They don't have resources at the time. So we would help them. We don't get hands-on involved okay um because when we get hands-on it's kind of like leans into things like creating a production coding in a production environment and we don't really want to get involved with that um but what we do is we would be their trusted advisor and guide on how to do this we would then say if you don't have development resources we can recommend a partner to you we can provide that hands-on hands-on support we also have our professional services team who can also go a bit more deeper into the implementation of these things um Stripe itself is very much a self-service platform. See, and the documentation is quite easy to use. You can actually just put in all your bits of how you want to do things and it will spit out a really good guide on how to do it. But then that's where we would get involved, say, well, this is how you do it. And we'd actually like show them on our own test accounts, for example. So we do go down as far as actually showing how we would have done it in terms of a POC and showing a demo and showing actual snippets of code. But we actually encourage the customer to actually go and do that, either themselves or with a partner. And sometimes we do get involved a little bit. It can't it's help like, it. It can't yeah. help it. You, yeah. you, you're there and you think, okay, this is what you would do. Yeah. But we try and keep that kind of separation if we can. So it's clearly a technical role. Yeah. What are some of the other key skills that you need in order to be successful as an SA? Yeah, so it's a very multifaceted role. I, it's one of the reasons why I chose it as a role is just not purely technical because there's a lot of things around um, understanding the business requirements of what the customer wants to do, where, what their goals are, what their mission is, and how they can achieve that with Stripe. So you do tend to go into, okay, how can technology unlock the value that you want to achieve? Um, so there's things like, okay, which, how do you want to expand? Which markets do you want to go to? Have you thought about like, what is your main priority? Like, do you want to go into certain regions before another region? Have you thought about how you're going to scale? Um, have you thought about how you're going to make things easy for you as you take on more and more customers? How can you onboard quicker? Um, there's also aspects around legal and compliance and security, which is a big thing. It's not just, uh, like I said, it's not just payments. A lot of customers we work with, they come to us and that might be, that's not the only team that they would have to go and talk to. We would help them to actually say, have you talked to your internal compliance teams, your security teams, your risk team? And we facilitate those conversations as well, or at least let them know these are the questions that you should be asking yourselves to actually get a really good integration, but also be safe with payments and fund flows and money movement with Stripe helping you to do that. So it sounds almost like a, a group of technical entrepreneurs that are looking at all aspects of, of the integration or of the business that you're working yeah. with. Yeah, that's right. It's very much like a, almost being like a resident CTO mm -hmm. for a customer. Right. So you're, you're almost there helping them for a short term to actually get them going. And the CTO role is very much not just technical. It's about pricing, making sure things are done in the most cost effective way as well. All those roles that a CTO has is kind of what an SA also has. Um, so how does being an SA at Stripe differ from other organizations that you've worked in? Actually, I'd, there hasn't been that much of a difference. The role itself, from a solutions architecture point of view, has always been the same around this trusted advisor guide, making sure that customers can enable which with the product they've got. The difference is, I think, the products that, that you're working with. I used to work in, in cloud providers. Um, the products there were quite immense and there's quite quite a lot to do. It's Stripe is very much around payments, but now we're expanding and scaling in other areas. So the only difference is, is understanding the technology that Stripe has compared to what my previous roles have had. And that's really just a matter of understanding what Stripe does. Do you bring the skills of a solutions architect to the same type of technology sometimes you know it's 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 easier to adapt in in, in this sense um the other things are i think around more around understanding the financial ecosystem space um understanding how finance works like some of the terminology some of the like the lexography that you have around finance and understanding that there's a little bit of a upskill on that but that's one of the attractions of joining Stripe for me was actually understanding the financial ecosystem and then 
translating that and helping customers um, with that because they come with their own terminology as well. So you, we really are like catching up and and like understanding how things work in their in their kind of space. So, how do you stay up to date with? trends in technology and, and in payment technology like given everything you've just described yeah that that is a hard one we have i i that i think it comes down to your interest as well um if if you have interest in technology you find that you'll subscribe to before you even start any role you you have certain websites that you uh, subscribe to or certain feeds that you actually look at even certain followers as well can you give us uh, some that you use to kind of stay up to date yeah so i use a lot of around TechCrunch in just understanding what the ecosystem around technology is doing um there's a lot of like actual followers in the payment space there's experts in the payment space uh, to name but a few there's there's a varied amount of um technology and um, fintech experts should i say in in on twitter and on linkedin um who actually opine on this on this space and are up to date on trends? Actually, there's a lot of um, lot of the incumbents there, like Visa, Mastercard, um, even some of the banks themselves, do provide a lot of um, reports and a lot of uh, papers and articles around payments. And that's just on the payments piece. But then there's all the old technology stuff as well that I've always been subscribed to. There's things like like. AWS uh, development communities, there's Google development communities, there's a lot of stuff around the machine learning space. Mm. Um, that's all our customers are into as well. They're using Tower, they're all into it in the general uh, artificial intelligence now. They're all into things like databases, storage. So there's, there's certain websites that I've always been um, uh, uh, subscribing to. So then how do you, you know, if, you, if you're trying to stay up to date with industry trends and, and what your customers are into, how do you then go about gathering requirements from your customers in order to help them? Yeah, so that, that's very much like um, our first call that we have with a customer. We do a discovery session. So we always take us, I always take us, and we are, we're encouraged to, like all well, other solutions like to do, is take a step back. And rather than just going deep into solutionization in in the first first day is actually tell me about your problems tell me about the challenges you're having what is it you're trying to do very much around the customer journey tell me what your customer is actually going to be doing when you take a payment and those customers is not just uh everyday customer on the retail site it could be customers internally as well so it could be your finance and accounting teams your operations teams how do they actually interface with uh, the whole payments landscape the whole financial landscape Asking, searching questions around that is there's a lot of like why going on and probably in the first two sets of calls, three sets of calls is to gather as much information as possible and then actually seeing how Stripe can help you with those uh, journeys, with those challenges, with the problems you're having and you know, you can cover from that like, okay, we'll find out that there's actually a little piece of thing that you never told us on the initial email, but we've discovered that now and this is how Stripe can help you. So it's going, it's going beyond just saying, oh, here's a set of questions and just answering them. It's actually expanding a little bit more and looking more to not just like what needs to be done immediately, but say six months, one year, five year, 10 year down the road, where do you want to be with that? And, and then prioritizing that, what makes sense. So that's customer requirements gathering. But what about feedback from developers, your, your out there and you know often speaking to technical people yeah what do you do with the feedback that you get from developers and how do you deliver deliver that back to yeah right. so one of the crucial aspects of the solution architecture is that we are sometimes a voice of the customer back to internal stripe product teams so it's a great kind of uh vehicle for getting new feature requests what we haven't done yet because there's so much stuff that i don't i think stripe is yet to develop because we're still a young company um so we take that feedback so if there's a missing if there's a gap in the product or if there's a feature that we haven't even thought about we'd collate we would collate that and then talk to our product teams around hey we have a customer here and they want to do x y and z we think these set of stripe products and services help but not quite so we need to build something in the product and then that uh, then there's a feedback loop of a conversation of our product teams talking to the customer with us in the middle around how we can deliver that feature to the customer. But not just that customer, we think about how we can scale that to all customers. So we would take an evaluation thinking, actually, you know what? There's a lot of customers who want the same feature. It makes sense to actually build that for everyone uh, to reduce toil. 
Okay. So then, given all of that information, like all, all of the things you have to learn and all the things you have to know and all the information you have to take back to the business, go back to Raj of 10 years ago when you were a young 20-year-old man. Oh, if. Yeah. And what information, what tips would you have given to yourself to be able to start a career as an SA? That's a good question. Um, I, I think the biggest tip I would go back if I had 10 years is that everything is a constant change. Whatever you learn about at that time, especially in technology, will always change. Like languages, technology, there's always something new coming along. Um, and it's okay to pick something and for it to change or for it to lose, lose kind of um, relevancy. Relevancy, you know. And and so be prepared for that. That it's a continuous learning environment, and being curious about your craft and curious about what you're doing really goes a long way because that will keep you. Well, for me especially, it keeps me excited. And I think if a younger self would actually say, you know there is so much yet to be done and there's so much technology that is yet to be developed. It's just to be ready for that change that comes along. Be prepared for, to learn some of the foundation elements. You should always know some of your foundations, mm -hmm. but those, founda those foundations never go away, but there's always, always something being um, built on top. Mm, yeah. It's funny that you go straight to, to learning because I think that's so important, not just to constantly be learning, but to learn in public as well. Yeah, right? that's so, right. Yeah. So people can see your development and see what your, your skill sets are. That's right. Yeah, and actually conveying it back as well to other people. So whatever you've learned, don't just sit there and just take in, like, and give it, give it back to people, like either through training or uh, teaching your colleagues on how to do things. And, and also broadcasting what you're doing as well. Yeah you know, like either write a blog or do a presentation or, you know, just do like a, a, a training course of some sort, you know, because it, it really satisfies if you understand it, but also pays back to other people in the community as well. Cool. And so finally, what would be your maybe top two or three places for developers to go to learn more about building integrations with Stripe? Yeah, sure. So one of the best places is Stripe.dev. Nice. Uh, that's that's been revamped and looks really good. And it's it goes beyond the documentation. So the second one would be the documentation. But Stripe.dev actually builds a layer on top around it takes problem sets and looks at solutions rather than just straightforward documentation, which can be difficult to navigate sometimes. And that kind of brings it together. So Stripe.dev will be the first place. Our documentation is really good as well. Um, and it's very much like, uh, it's not just static documentation, it's very dynamic. So you can put in configuration, like Stripe Connect, for example, you can put in all your different configurations of how you want to take payments, how you want to monetize, how you want to handle the merchant um, onboarding experience and the risk aspect, and it will spit out relevant documentation that gets you going in terms of code as well. And one of the last places is also around what's happening in just development like Discord channels and Slack communities. Um, if you do anything, if you do a search for Stripe on anything, it, there's always some kind of uh, article or some kind of uh, content out there that you can, you can use. Um, and we're trying to make that better as well and bring that together. Um, YouTube videos are great as well. The, the videos are fantastic yeah. um, because it really helps me as a solutions architect to do my job where then I don't have to do that kind of 101. A customer can see that. And then they come with more of the questions that will really save me time. I think, okay, yeah, you, you've understood that, but now these other questions, which are brilliant questions, let's dive into those. And everyone learns differently, don't they? So okay. some people like video, some prefer to do a, a control F and find a certain thing in the docs that they're looking for. So it's blending all of those things together, isn't it? That's right, yeah. yeah. Well, thanks so much, Raj, no, for stopping by. It's great to speak to you. Thank you. Cheers.